Chapter 1351, Being Driven Beyond Forbearance Venerable Netherworld, who stood next to Nine Nether Swordmeister, quickly grabbed the latter's arm and shook his head indifferently. Those three men have myriad sword sec behind them. You're also well aware of this sect's power. Further, the myriad sword sect still has the everlasting palace behind them. You may be able to help Dao Master Qingfeng for now if you fight them, but you'll likely be the target of crazy pursuit by the myriad sword sect once we enter the secret palace. But I can't just watch Qingfeng face such a predicament and misfortune without doing nothing. Nine Nether Swordmeister angrily rebuked. You also know what kind of relationship is between me and him. Venerable Netherworld was silent for a moment before slowly said, Ching Feng has real connections with many people, and you're not the only person who thinks like that at the moment. Just wait a bit more. If someone else takes action, it won't be too late for you to step forward. Else, you'll be hunted down endlessly in the future once you provoke such a feud with the myriad sword sect. But, Nine Nether Swordmeister broke free from Venerable Netherworld's grip and hesitated. No buts, cut Venerable Netherworld with a cold face as he added with a heavy voice. There are countless powerhouses in this place now, and the relationship between the various forces is intricate. No one can say if someone is an enemy or a friend. Endure it and be patient. Step forward when those people act beyond the limit of forbearance. You can expect that I won't sit idly by then as well. Nine Nether Swordmeister hesitated for a while and then finally remained silent. He was well aware that even if he got involved, he could only lead Dao Master Ching Feng out of danger, but it was impossible for him to kill those myriad sword sects three perfected golden immortals. After all, the number of experts from this sect who came here was definitely more than these three. If Venerable Netherworld got involved, the odds of solving the problem would be much greater. A blurry figure suddenly flickered from the northwest and appeared in the middle of the fight in midair in the blink of an eye. The new arrival was a blue-haired stout man with an immortal sword sheathed on his back. Blue Ocean Title The instant he drew his immortal sword from its sheath, a blue sword wave formed in a flash and smashed toward the myriad sword sex three perfected golden immortals. Nine Nether Swordmeister's complexion slightly changed and he blurted in a low voice, That's indigent whale sea emperor of heavenly ocean immortal domain. I never thought he was friends with Dao Master Ching Feng. Venerable Netherworld shook his head and sighed. Indigent whale sea emperor's personality is similar to Dao Master Ching Feng's. He's also a warm and genial person, so it's no wonder that they can become best friends. But this guy is now getting involved, no doubt he will incur a feud with the myriad sword sect. He's just pulling the grudge over to the sea clans in the heavenly ocean region. Indigent whale sea emperor is truly brave and loyal to go to such lengths for the sake of his friends, said Nine Nether Swordmeister coldly. That's the reason why he could fully unite the heavenly ocean region under him. Mortals and immortals in that region are extraordinarily united under him. Further, many powerhouses who admire him have all gone there to take shelter, causing the region to increase in strength immensely. Unless the myriad sword sect fully dispatches all their manpower, it's nearly impossible to cause a big loss to indigent whale sea emperor and the heavenly ocean region. Venerable Netherworld silently nodded and was about to speak when his expression suddenly shifted and his eyes fell on another figure who took action. That's Undemonized Sovereign M.O. Nine Nether's complexion changed as he blurted out. He could recognize the newly arrived person instantly since he had seen that man before. Venerable Netherworld frowned and muttered, Undemonized Sovereign M.O. is famous for being both nefarious and righteous in the immortal world, one who always does everything in a whim. But I haven't heard that he has any friendship with anyone. How can he now go out and brave the risk to help Dao Master Ching Feng and offend the myriad sword sect? I don't care about anything else now, said Nine Nether Swordmeister with a heavy voice. Undemonized Sovereign Emo has now moved to help Dao Master Ching Feng. There's no way I can still keep here. With that said, his figure streaked into the sky and instantly appeared in the middle of the combatants. 
He fiercely shouted, Humph, relying on numbers to bully others is really what Myriad Sword Sect is, huh? I, Nine Nether Swordmeister, just can't watch my friend Ching Fong being bullied by you. Dao Master Ching Fong was very touched. Even in his imagination, he didn't dare think that some old friends of his would stand up for him. He shifted to the powerful enemies from the Myriad Sword Sect and then said in a loud voice, this Ching Fong is deeply grateful for the act of friendship the three of you have shown me. You all know my character. I never like to be hypocritical, so please help me kill these three low lives together. Count me in. Venerable Netherworld rose into the sky and slashed with his immortal sword, instantly sweeping across the already distressed Adjourn North Sword. Had the latter not possessed a high-grade defensive artifact, he would have been killed by Venerable Netherworld's strike. Ching Fong froze for a moment. Just as he was about to ask, he suddenly heard a voice transmission from Nine Nether Swordmeister and immediately understood. Quickly after, he gratefully said, Thank you, fellow immortal Netherworld. Venerable Netherworld was feeling a bit regretful at the moment due to failing to slay a Jern North Sword. He slowly shook his head and said, I didn't stand up to help you, but for my brother who likes to poke his nose everywhere. Bahaha. Nine Nether Swordmeister laughed aloud. Spare me the nonsense when making good friends, will you? Besides, the shitty Myriad Sword sect is just a bully and they got nothing we need to fear. I heard from a certain Supreme, a great emperor who once said that, I'll draw my word to help any friend who's in need and in trouble and happily kill for their sake. It's just a pity that Supreme, the great emperor who I admire and respect is no longer here else some shitty sex wouldn't have dared to act rampant and force others to fight. The hundreds of thousands of immortals present all wore strange expressions. From the line just recited by Nine Nether Swordmeister, they also knew who that supreme great emperor was. Many powerhouses also had heard the famous line that he once said, I'll draw my word to help any friend who's in need and in trouble and happily kill for their sake. It was the line once declared by Star Cultivation Great Emperor, once the most brilliant and dazzling powerhouse in the immortal world. Just that declaration alone won him many friends and countless admirers among supernatural beings in the immortal world. If it wasn't for their cultivation level being too low and not having enough qualifications to become friends with Star Cultivation Great Emperor, at least 90% of hundreds of thousands of renowned immortals would have chosen to make friends with that person, and become his genuine friends. And now, for perfected golden immortal powerhouses, indigent whale sea emperor, undemonized sovereign MO, nine nether swordmeister, and venerable netherworld all stood up to help Dao master Ching Fong. What was the difference between this occasion and the event 700 plus years ago where a massive number of powerhouses extended their hands to help the Vermilion Bird Holy Sect when it was being besieged by powerful enemies? In the midst of the immortal crowd, Sablefiend Scorpio restrained her killing intent and quietly observed the situation in front. The order she received was to rescue Dao Master Ching Fong. But now, for perfected golden immortals stood up for justice and took action, so Dao Master Ching Fong wouldn't be in danger for the time being. She must make clear of the situation first and devise some plans accordingly. Thousands of kilometers away. One of the myriad sword sex leaders, a perfected golden immortal who brought the sex disciples to the boundless mountain range to enter the secret palace, looked coldly at Dao Master Ching Feng's group of five in midair. The calm-looking old man beside him, however, slowly said with a chilling light glittering in his eyes, Tell those three to give up besieging Dao Master Ching Fong. Wait until the secret palace is opened and we'll make plans accordingly. This. The burly late stage, perfected golden immortal hesitated, but after seeing the old man's cold and ruthless expression, he eventually could only sigh helplessly and instantly rose into the sky. He unleashed immortal flags that blocked the onslaught towards the three powerhouses of his sect, causing his body to shake slightly. Then, he shouted coldly, This lord is Myriad Sword Sex Elder, North Peak Deluge. Please cease and halt, the five of you. Dao Master Qingfeng's group of five immediately gave up chasing after hearing this and coldly stared at North Peak Deluge. 
The grudges between us shall not be settled until the secret palace is opened, North Peak Deluge arrogantly said. I'm sure you're all here for the inheritance of drunken immortal supreme in the secret palace. I don't think you want both sides to get injured before we enter the secret palace and make things easier for others, no? Dao Master Ching Feng realized that this issue was caused by him, so he immediately cupped his fists to the other four, saying, Ching Feng is deeply grateful for your help. However, he's right, yo all came here for the inheritance of drunken immortal supreme in the secret palace. I can't let you all be affected by my problem when you will have to fight for such an enormous immortal fate. The Myriad Sword sect is willing to put this issue on hold, so we shall refrain from being aggressive as well. We shall see what will happen, whether it is after entering the secret palace or after our trip to the secret palace is concluded. Might as well. Fine with me. Indigent Whale Sea Emperor shot an indifferent look at North Peak Deluge and snorted at him, before he returned to the camp of powerhouses from the heavenly ocean region he brought here. Undemonized Sovereign Emo himself never uttered any word from the moment he took action. Now that the situation reached this point, he only let out a cold smile and said, I, demonic M.O., am just rootless duckweed. I kill and help as my heart tells me to. If anyone of Myriad's sword sect still dares to provoke Dao Master Ching Feng again, don't blame me for slaughtering thousands of you to vent my anger. With that said, he turned to Dao Master Ching Feng and lightly said, let's go together from now on. One enemy comes, we'll kill him or her, and if two more comes, then we'll slay them as well. Got it. Dao Master Ching Feng felt warm inside and nodded seriously. I already declared before that whoever bullies my friend is my enemy. I'll deal with whoever it is even if my life is on the stake, said Nine Nether Swordmeister. North Peak Deluge, I, Nine Nether Swordmeister, will make it clear to you. When you're prepared to deal with Ching Feng, then be prepared to be my enemy as well. With that said, he slightly nodded to Dao Master Ching Feng and quickly retreated with Venerable Netherworld. Boiling killing intent filled North Peak Deluge's heart, but when he recalled the words of that old senior, he immediately sighed inwardly and slowly said, it's difficult to stay who will die inside the secret palace. We are all already feuding, so we might as well not wait until the trip to the secret palace is concluded. Let's hope we run into each other in the secret palace. Fine. Dao Master Ching Feng replied indifferently. The fighting between powerhouses quickly calmed down. As Dao Master Ching Feng and undemonized Sovereign Emma left, the myriad sword sex people also quickly disappeared from everyone's sight. Sable Fiend Scorpio also returned silently to the myriad golden catamaran and directly entered the heavenly abode artifact. She didn't want to know the relationship between Tang Xiao and Dao Master Ching Feng. For her, the most important thing was to cultivate and fulfill her job to serve Tang Xiao for 5,000 years. Chapter 1352 The Opening of the Secret Palace On the third floor of the myriad golden catamaran, Tang Xiao and Apotheosis Bella were standing side by side. Both of them didn't retract their vision from outside even though the battle was over. It's quite unexpected. I never thought Dao Master Ching Feng would have such connections. Even those two guys, Nine Nether and Netherworld, didn't hesitate to stand up for him and offend the Myriad Sword sect. Seems like my goodwill went for nothing, said Tang Xiao with a pale smile. Well, who in the immortal world doesn't have a few real friends after living for several thousands of years? Commented Apotheosis Bella with a smile. It's just that I didn't expect that even the fiend undemonized Sovereign Emo turned out to be Ching Feng's life and death friend. Seems like the trip to the secret palace will be full of brutal fights beyond what I've expected. A complicated look flashed in Tang Xiao's eyes. What Apotheosis Bella said touched the deep pain in his heart. He once thought that he also had several friends, life and death friends. Yet, in the end, those he thought as his best friends were the very ones who made him gravely injured. I feel a bit regretful all of a sudden, said Tang Xiao suddenly. Huh? Apotheosis Bella turned her head and her beautiful face looked bewildered, asking, What are you regretting, exactly? 
I regret bringing a few perfected golden immortals with me, said Tang Xiao. Else, I'd have been able to hunt more happily in the secret palace later. Xiao, I don't want you to court danger and be in danger before you're strong enough, got it? Apotheosis Bella smiled wryly. In particular, I never want to see you end up miserable being hunted down by powerful enemies. I still remember the words you told me back then, that a man's revenge is never too late even if you wait for ten years or more since you will get the chance to get revenge, as long as you're alive. We'll make our enemies pay a painful price when we've become stronger. That's for sure. Tang Xiao took a deep breath to suppress the killing intent boiling inside him. He slowly nodded and said, no worries. I'm not a reckless person. I won't easily clash with them if I don't have full assurance. Besides, my main purpose in going to the secret mansion is to get cultivation resources and massive wealth, to begin with. Time passed by quickly, and in an instant, it was time for the secret palace to open. As the glowing red blob from the eastern horizon of the boundless mountain range raised, myriad streaks of light suddenly dyed the entire vault of heaven scarlet. A terrifying pressure suddenly descended from the sky and fell directly into the undulating mountain range. Whoa! Innumerable screams came from the vast mountain range. Those immortal world's powerhouses who had been hiding in the boundless mountain range in order to be the first to enter the secret palace, when it opened. The number of golden immortals was just enormous, and some perfected golden immortals were even among them. However, that terrifying pressure was just too horrible. Even among perfected golden immortal powerhouses, only five figures were able to run away in distress. Those with keen eyes could see that they had been seriously injured increasing the risk and danger they would face when they entered the secret palace. At this moment, Tang Xiao summoned Sablefiend Scorpio from the Heavenly Abode artifact. He ignored the confused Star Luminous and Star Pang and shifted his vision to the boundless mountain range, saying slowly, he's truly worthy as the strongest expert in the immortal world 80,000 years ago. Just the immortal beams that opened the secret palace alone already have such great power. It's highly likely the situation inside the secret palace itself is much more dangerous. But we still must strive hard even if it's ridden with dangers, said Star Tears. Tang Xiao nodded and said, if anything, you may not be able to stay in the heavenly abode artifact before entering the secret palace. But you should be able to return to the heavenly abode after we're inside. I hope we can have a great harvest. As of now, under the terrifying pressure, a rainbow gradually appeared and a 50 kilometers wide square entrance fully appeared and instantly radiated a soft white light. The secret palace has opened. Let's go. A group of figures suddenly rushed towards the 50 kilometers square entrance lightning fast, with tens of thousands of other people. Nearly all the groups were headed by perfected golden immortals as all of them disappeared into the white light. It was a scene Tang Xiao had never seen before. While looking at the millions of golden immortals and perfected golden immortals lunging into the secret palace's entrance, he took a deep breath and said in a deep voice, let's enter the secret palace's entrance. I suspect there's a teleportation array there, so keep in mind that if we get separated by that teleportation array after we enter it, remember to inform the rest using your message token and immediately gather with the nearest one among us. Do not try to show off your ability there, and do call any of us at once should you run into dangers. Thank you, Great Tang Heavenly Emperor. The duo cupped their fists and gratefully said. Tang Xiao took a deep breath, flew up, and bolted towards the entrance. Buzz. The moment Tang Xiao's figure was submerged in the white light, enormous energy instantly wrapped him up. The earth and sky felt like spinning around and, after Tang Xiao's sight returned, he found himself in an undulating mountain range. The mountains here towered into the clouds, at least thousands of meters high, while all the unrecognized trees with roots on the ground also similarly reached the sky. Nearly all of them were thousands of meters high, and some of them even reached tens of thousands of meters. Being here made anyone feel like they suddenly turned into a drop of water in the ocean. 
Suddenly, a vague sensation came from Tang Xiao's left side. In nearly a flash, Tang Xiao wore an invisibility charm and restrained his aura as he silently blended into the bush ten meters high. This is origin yang fruit? After calming himself, Tang Xiao glanced around, and what surprised him was the nine dazzling golden fruits at the distance several meters away. It took him only a glance to determine that it was origin yang fruit, a spirit fruit that could increase one's cultivation and quintessence energy. As expected, treasures are just everywhere in the secret palace. After 80,000 years passed, any spirit herbs here will be extraordinary. Tang Shou sighed inwardly. Fifteen minutes later, Tang Shou sensed a very vague aura. As it became clearer, a golden-robed and long-haired burly man was getting closer and closer until Tang Shou was able to see his face clearly. It was a golden immortal. Tang Xiao ruminated for a second and decided not to harm this person, but waited quietly for this guy to pass by. Then, he silently picked the nine origin yen fruits and then stuffed them into his ring. Afterward, he took out a message token to message the other four. Quickly, Tang Xiao received a reply from the other four. After figuring out the location where they had been teleported, he suddenly frowned since he found that the distance between him and Sablefiend Scorpio was just a few thousands of kilometers away. They could meet quickly if they were to fly straight and openly. However, they needed to avoid other people while also being alert to potential crises in this secret house, so they wouldn't be able to meet shortly. Quickly after, while keeping his vigilance, Tang Xiao met two other golden immortals. He chose not to disturb them since he couldn't recognize their identities. He could tell that these two people were guarding against each other and then separated in two directions. Only then did Tang Xiao continue on his route. Half a day passed and Tang Xiao had traveled hundreds of thousands of kilometers. He encountered several waves of immortals on the way, but he didn't meet any of them, nor did he alarm them, he only silently halted his pace and hid nearby. That's. Tang Xiao saw two sides fighting over a stalk of herbs called Solitary Thread Herb, a very rare herb that could heal one's immortal soul and also had significant effects on perfected golden immortal. A late stage golden immortal against an early stage perfected golden immortal. The former is somewhat interesting since he can fight equally with the later. It seems like his identity is extraordinary. Unfortunately, he's wearing a mask artifact that blocks any spiritual sense, so I can't see his true face. Well, might as well wait for both of them to get mutually wounded and be the third party who grabs the harvest without much effort. I can't easily fight with anyone here. Else the risks will increase once I get injured. Tang Xiao thought inwardly while watching two people fight more fiercely. When that late-stage golden immortal was hit hard and seriously injured by that perfected golden immortal, and was ready to give up the solitary thread herb, his complexion slightly changed since two sword beasts unexpectedly flashed from the grove nearby. The big tree towering to the sky was unscathed, but that golden immortal was hit by the two sword beams, causing his immortal soul to be instantly obliterated. Get out! The perfected golden immortal's expression changed and he instantly lunged towards the solitary thread herb, uprooted it in the blink of an eye, and quickly stuffed it into his interspatial ring. Whoosh! Whoosh! Two figures flickered and appeared in front of him lightning fast. One of them, a white-haired old man in a brown robe on the left, hideously smiled. Hand over that solitary thread herb and I'll spare your life. Else, you'll end up just like that one. That perfected golden immortal sneered at his demand and said in a deep voice, I may not be able to fight both of you even if I go all out. But do you dare to openly chase me if I want to flee? The secret palace is now ridden with crises. Just a slight misfortune is enough to either encounter some other powerhouses or even touch some restriction arrays here. Feel free to chase me if you think the solitary thread herb is worth risking your life. Having said that, his figure had already dashed away to the distance in a flash. He even went so far so as to burst out a huge aura. Damn it. The two perfected golden immortals' expressions enormously changed and they could only watch that fella flee at breakneck speed, 
with furious faces. They tried to pursue him for several thousands of kilometers before directly giving up. They indeed didn't dare to hunt down the enemy in the crisis-ridden secret palace. Losing their lives just for one solitary thread herb was not worth it. Tang Xiao kept tracking these people since the perfected golden immortal who got the solitary thread herb fled to the direction he was heading to. Hence, he made a short detour when the two perfected golden immortal halted their pace and then tailed the other one all the way. Chapter 1353 Killing People and Robbing Treasures The abrupt saber beam cut off several towering giant trees with diameters of several tens of meters. Despite his vigilant observation of the surroundings, that early stage perfected golden immortal was hit hard by the surprise blow and flew away to smash heavily on a tree trunk. As a matter of fact, he had restrained all the huge aura he released previously, but the enemy had been extremely deceitful and treacherous, thus inflicting heavy injuries on him. He wouldn't be able to recover in a short time even though he took a purple scene pill. Who are you? Get the fuck out. Unleashing his innate natal weapon, an iron chain-like weapon, he vigilantly stared at the front and shouted. Ahead of him, a burly figure appeared in front of that perfected golden immortal. The man was more than three meters high and had a sharp horn on his forehead and a few sharp spikes growing on his shoulders. The most striking thing about him was his arm since he had four, each of which was holding an immortal weapon. Hand over your ring and I'll spare you, or you can choose to die early. Thornhead Sage licked his purple lips and stared fixedly at the perfected golden immortal's body with eyes resembling a dormant viper's. It's you? Venerable Primal Forest's expression changed. He had seen this Thornhead Sage and knew that he was a mid-stage, perfected golden immortal. Even if he were to fight against this person at his peak condition, it was likely he wouldn't be his match. Not to mention that he had fought repeatedly and now was seriously injured after the ambush. Thornhead Sage grinned. Well, well, you seem to know who I am. Very well, you should know my strength since you know me, so be obedient and do what I told you. Give me your ring and I can let you off. Else, I'll kill in this secret palace even though I must chase you down for thousands of miles and expose myself. Thornhead Sage, I fought against many strong enemies after entering this secret palace. Except for this one solitary thread herb I just got, I haven't obtained any other treasure. I can give you the solitary thread herb, but we must avoid a fight between us, said Venerable Primal Forest. Solitary thread herb? Thornhead Sage's expression shifted. Seeing that Primal Forest was afraid of him, he nodded happily and said, Might as well. You chose to hand over the solitary thread herb and have paid a big price for it. I accept your request, so take it out. Venerable Primal Forest took the stock of solitary thread herb from his interspatial ring and threw it to Thornhead Sage. What a great item. Thornhead Sage was ecstatic after receiving the herb. Even if his immortal soul was injured, he would be able to recover quickly. Having this item was equal to having another half-life in this danger-ridden secret palace. Buzz. A sword light similar to a rainbow suddenly swept across Thornhead Sage, causing his defensive artifact to activate as it hit his body. The impact on his chest made him spurt out a mouthful of blood. The moment he grabbed the solitary thread herb, he prepared to retreat to adjust his breathing and then kill this damn bastard but to his shock, he found that several talismans had appeared around him. Celestial Runes Array Primal Forest hideously grinned and loudly shouted to ignite the explosion of talismans. The last lightning bolt eventually formed a dazzling celestial star chart, and only took an instant for it to explode the celestial runes array directly. Shit! Thornhead Sage instantly put the solitary thread herb into his interspatial ring and took out a bamboo hat-like defensive artifact, from the inside. However, he was too late to cover himself with it when the celestial runes array burst and exploded. The explosion of this array not only caused great damage to him, but it also severed his ability to fight. Primal Forest was not unscathed either, and coughed up a mouthful of blood. 
he'd have also fallen to the ground if it wasn't for his immortal sword that suddenly appeared in his hand that he used to support himself. The Celestial Runes Array was great at killing, but the only drawback was that the caster would also be affected. He had been seriously injured and now was inflicted by the impact of this array, worsening his injury. Puff. A sword tip suddenly swept across. Even though Primal Forest saw the flashing of the sword strike, he was only able to retreat for several meters before the sword cut him into two halves. His immortal soul frantically tried to escape, but it then was hit by a lightning talisman and eventually vanished. Well, well. Killing people and snatching their treasures is indeed thrilling. Tang Xiao took the venerable primal forest's ring and instantly shifted his attention to Thornhead Sage in front. A smile crept on his face and he straightly ignored the pleading look on the guy's face. After killing him, he searched out the guy's interspatial ring and then buried their remains as fast as possible before vanishing in this spot of the dense forest. Fifteen minutes later. Whoosh. 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 Three figures flickered lightning fast and instantly appeared at the slaughtering spot. The three men looked hostile and guarded against each other only found the traces of battle here and nothing else. They then quickly left in three separate directions as though having a prior agreement. In the jungle. Tang Xiao silently moved along while observing Primal Forest and Thornhead Sage's interspatial rings. What he found made him happy. Both men had lots of good things, especially a huge number of immortal crystals and crystal essences. Thornhead Sage, in particular. This guy actually had obtained a lot of heavenly materials and earthly treasures though he was only in the secret palace for a short time. The fella seemed to have ambushed several unlucky ghosts. So the number of treasures and wealth in his interspatial ring was several times than primal forests. As he kept moving forward, Tang Xiao found many precious herbs and immortal stones, immortal crystals, and crystal essences scattered in the bushes. He inferred that the likelihood of this secret palace having some mines of these resources was very slim. It was very likely that the immortal stones, immortal crystals, and crystal essences he found in the bushes were casually discarded by drunken immortal supreme. Buzz. Suddenly, Tang Xiao felt like he had crashed into a thread. At the moment when he wanted to retreat, a huge suction force instantly sucked him into a particular space. Congratulations on activating the chessboard of Drunken Immortal, young friend. A resonant voice suddenly rang in Tang Xiao's ear and a white-haired and bearded old man appeared out of the blue. The old man was leaning on a dragon-headed cane and had a purple-gold gourd hanging on top of his cane. A wisp of consciousness? Tang Xiao slowly cupped his fists and said, Junior Tang Xiao greets Senior Drunken Immortal. The old man stroked his beard and smilingly asked, How do you know that I'm Drunken Immortal Supreme? You don't think that I may be the guardian of the palace left by Drunken Immortal Supreme? The most remarkable feature of Drunken Immortal Supreme is the wine that never leaves his body, replied Tang Xiao with a smile. Hence, I'm sure this secret palace belongs to the elderly. Further, there's also a wine gourd hanging on your cane, so I have no doubt that Senior should be Drunken Immortal Supreme. Smart. Drunken Immortal Supreme smiled and said, It was not easy for anyone to come into contact with the secret palace I left in the Immortal after 80,000 years. It's open now, but it wasn't easy. Also, you're the 3,600th person who has touched the enchantment. Yet you're the only one who correctly guessed my identity, some more difficult feat to achieve. My main body gave three chances to fuse with this consciousness, so if you can answer one question from me, I'll use one of the chances for you. How about it? Fusing consciousness, meaning that his main body in the god's realm would be communicating with me? Tang Xiao was taken aback and respectfully said, Please do ask, senior. The wisp of consciousness of drunken immortal supreme asked with a smile, you've been cultivating all this well, what are you cultivating for? Tang Xiao didn't even ponder and answered directly, it's to live. Drunken immortal supreme shook his head and said, your answer is ambiguous and the idea is nothing new. 
You see, I've thought of the very question you asked me countless times already, but the answer I got is always the same, to live and to be alive. Tang Xiao firmly added, only by living can I pursue the meaning of the great Tao and the essence of life itself. Only by being alive can I add more color to the canvas of life, tasting the emotions and realizing the true meanings behind every insight. The longer you live, the richer your experience, and the more you can gain in and from life. But the meaning of life itself lies in the process and the journey, not in the result. Suddenly, a fluctuation radiated from drunken immortal supreme's wisp of consciousness. After a while, a rainbow light flashed out of his eyes and firmly locked Tang Xiao within. A light whisper then rang in Tang Xiao's ear. Why is your aura a bit familiar? Tang Xiao slightly frowned and then burst into laughter as he immediately said, Surely you jest, drunken immortal senior. You existed 80,000 years ago and I'm a cultivator of this age. We're from different eras and not even on the same plane. How can you jest that I have a familiar aura? You must have made a mistake. Drunken Immortal Supreme shook his head and said, I don't think I'm mistaken. If it was eons ago, I may not remember your familiar aura, but I've sensed this aura 800 years ago, an aura that appeared and then vanished as quickly as it came. I'm sure of it. Did you cross a tribulation and ascend to godhood 800 years ago? Tang Xiao's countenance changed and he stared at drunken immortal supreme with eyes full of vigilance. He didn't expect that back when he had crossed his divinity tribulation and got exposed to the divinity force from the god's realm, drunken immortal supreme who was in the god's realm was actually able to perceive him. Senior, were you perhaps at the immortal exuviate pond? Drunken Immortal Supreme slightly nodded and smilingly said, That's right. Every newcomer who ascended to godhood must guard the Immortal Exuviate Pond for 100,000 years. And I have been stationed here for 80,000 years, so that's why I can sense your aura, though you eventually didn't ascend to the god's realm. I met some mishaps and ran into some wicked people, said Tang Xiao. Let's just say I encountered and got hit by a certain predestined fate. For lack of a better option, I can only recultivate again from scratch. That's really unfortunate. Drunken Immortal Supreme sighed. Only two people from the immortal world have ascended to godhood in the last 80,000 years. I thought that our camp would have new blood from our world, but in the end, it turned out that an inescapable fate had hit the new member. All right, you promise me one thing and I'll teach you the secret of the heavenly circuit world array. You'll be able to receive the inheritance I left behind in the secret palace and won't be subject to any restrictions here. Tang Xiao's eyes shone and he immediately cupped his fist and said, Please instruct me, drunken immortal senior. Drunken immortal supreme said, You already have sufficient cultivation level, so you won't be pressured to recultivate again. As long as you're not killed by other powerhouses, it won't be a problem for you to reach godhood again in the future. Hence, my inheritance won't be of great significance to you. Besides, you already have your Tao, the path you need to walk on. Promise me not to get my inheritance but inherit any treasures in my secret palace. You can take away anything here if you have the ability. Chapter 1354, Super Cheat A smile crept up on the corner of Tang Xiao's lips and climbed onto his face. That was exactly my plan before coming here. Senior may be formidable, but your inheritance won't help me and will instead affect my own cultivation path. I give you my word on that. Drunken Immortal Supreme happily nodded. A stream of torrential knowledge then merged into Tang Xiao's sea of knowledge regarding the ancient array, as though it was directly engraved in Tang Xiao's mind. In nearly an instant, he looked at this pocket world space. It was no longer a void environment, but a running and evolving array pattern. Thank you, senior. Tang Xiao cupped his fists. Drunken Immortal Supreme shook his head and smiled. It's part of your immortal fate and karma. I look forward to seeing you and I also hope that you can be kind to my inheritor. Our camp is kind of at the edge and on the losing side over here. Only by having a steady stream of new members joining us will we be able to. Tang Xiao was bewildered and confused. 
but then he found that the rainbow light in the eyes of drunken immortal Supreme had gradually vanished. He wanted to ask some more questions but eventually swallowed them back since the divinity force dissipated. He was aware that drunken immortal Supreme had left, but what did he mean in the end? Our camp is in a weak position? Does it mean there are also battles in the gods' realm? Do all the gods and those who ascend from the immortal world to the gods' realm belong to one camp? It was safe to say that Tang Xiao knew many things due to his distinguished status in the past. He finally inferred from the line said by Drunken Immortal Supreme that the gods' realm was similarly chaotic and unstable. Perhaps the battles there were even more brutal than in the immortal world. Ascending to godhood and becoming a god was once an achievement very close to him in the past, but it was a very far destination for the present him. Hence, he decided to put it away first. Buzz. The wisp of consciousness of drunken immortal supreme stared deeply at Tang Xiao and then smiled. Young friend has gained the approval of my main body, so this drunken immortal chessboard is useless to you. There are three treasures stored inside the drunken immortal chessboard, a ninth grade offensive artifact soul slasher saber, a ninth grade defensive artifact immortal spirit armor, and a primordial chaos Dao pill. You can take all of them or choose one of them. I'll take all of them, said Tang Xiao without hesitation. Drunken Immortal Supreme's wisp of consciousness slightly smiled. Since you choose to take all of them, the enchantment here will no longer have any effect. This is the end of my duty. Fare thee well, young friend. We shall meet again in the gods' realm. The starlight scattered from Drunken Immortal Supreme's wisp of consciousness. As Tang Xiao put the three artifacts into his interspatial ring, the world in front of him changed and he returned to the jungle where he was before. What a rewarding harvest! Tang Xiao smiled gleefully. Through the memory in his sea of knowledge, he already knew the array structure of the entire secret palace, such as its complete map that had been engraved in his mind. He could clearly know which spots had restrictions, which ones were more dangerous, and which ones were safer, as well as some places suitable for fighting and hiding. Damn, this is really a fraud, a super cheat. Tang Xiao's smile was exceptionally dazzling. Through his memory, he knew that there was a spot on the left side of the place that had a massive deposit of precious ores, so he immediately headed there and messaged Sable Fiend Scorpio to hurry towards that place as fast as possible. He only needed to guard against other immortal powerhouses since he already knew the route ahead and was able to ignore the hidden dangers. His speed multiplied several times and he moved like a gust of wind along the way while keeping an eye for the precious resources. Along the path, he avoided tens of traps arranged by other immortals and obtained a lot of cultivation resources after a thrilling, but not dangerous process. Then, he appeared near a sparkling lake. There's violet coral agate at the bottom of this lake, a total of 108 pieces of them that formed an immortal pearl protection array. The violet coral agate is a very precious material for refining. I'm sure there's a more precious treasure protected by the immortal pearl protection array. I can see the purple coral agate down there, but I can't figure out what's inside the array. It would be very dangerous if I were to go down there to have a look. Just that golden-eyed aquaproof beast alone is very powerful and can definitely be ranked in the top 10 immortal beasts in this secret palace. Unless my cultivation is a level higher, I'll likely court my own death if I go down there now. Tang Xiao couldn't help but sigh. He was unwilling, yet he could only look at the lake with desire. Just the total value of those 108 purple coral agates was enough to purchase 10 ninth grade artifacts. Giving up now without trying was definitely an enormous loss. Suddenly, his expression shifted and his figure instantly disappeared. The moment after, four figures slowly appeared, three men and a woman in black robes, and all of them were perfected golden immortals. While restraining his aura, Tang Xiao observed the appearances of the four people. Then, his expression suddenly changed since he recognized the identity of one of them, a member of Myriad Sword Sect, who besieged Dao Master Ching Feng in the boundless mountain range outside. Senior Brother North Pure, we already intercepted tens of people already, 
but none of them were from the pristine immortal Confucian sect nor the heavenly ocean region. Also, the inheritance in the secret palace of drunken immortal supreme will only be open for three years and this place will close, if nobody can obtain it. It will take several thousands of years or even longer before this place opens again. We don't have much time now. I know that, junior brother North Omen. But the atmosphere and vastness of this secret palace are nearly comparable to a large-scale immortal domain. Finding the people of pristine immortal Confucian sect and those from the heavenly ocean region is no different than finding a needle in a haystack. Hence, we can only try our luck. If we're lucky and run into them, then we'll kill them to vent our anger. But if we don't, then we can only go all out to rob immortal treasures and cultivation resources, as well as finding the inheritance place as fast as possible to snatch this immortal fate. I'll definitely kill those assholes of the pristine immortal Confucian sect if I run into them, just like those dead bastards from the Vermilion Bird Holy Sect. Yeah, encountering them will be a blessing for us. Killing them and robbing them of their treasures will be quite a double harvest for us. Tang Xiao watched the four people pass by as they quickly disappeared into the jungle in the distance. Intense killing intent boiled in his heart as these myriad sword sex bastards had definitely killed quite a lot of Vermilion Bird Holy Sex members. Now that he bumped into them, he swore to make them pay greatly. Afterward, Tang Xiao quickly followed and kept thinking hard, hoping to find a good way to kill these four enemies from the Myriad Sword Sect. Suddenly, he abruptly halted his advance in a flash. His eyes flickered as a great idea suddenly crossed his mind. The next moment, he unleashed his spiritual sense for a moment, enough to be sensed by those four people in front. Acting recklessly, huh? The four people quickly returned and bolted towards Tang Xiao. Tang Xiao himself had devised a plan and didn't bother to get pestered by these four and retreated back quickly. As he appeared at the lakeside, he took out an immortal sword from his interspatial ring and vigilantly stared at the myriad sword sex for perfected golden immortals. Aside from that female mid-stage perfected golden immortal, the other three are just early-stage perfected golden immortals. The strength of those four should be more or less equal to that golden-eyed aquaproof beast. I just need to pull them into the lake and then wake up that beast so it can help deal with something else. As Tang Xiao thought up to this point, he immediately shifted to the four people and said, Where did you four come from, and why are you chasing me? Venerable North Peer sneered and casually said, You dare to release your spiritual sense in this secret place to stalk on us, meaning that you harbor malice to us and want to cross us for. Spit out your name. If your answer satisfies me, I may leave your immortal soul intact so you have a chance to be reborn. Tang Xiao deeply frowned and angrily shouted, It turns out you're nothing but some bastard brigands who want to kill me, huh? Let me tell you, I'm a late-stage golden immortal. You dare gang up on me, then I'll risk everything to get the attention of all the powerhouses in the surroundings to completely destroy you. Venerable North Pure's eyes flashed with contempt. He glanced at the three others and immediately sneered. <laughs> Just a late-stage golden immortal nobody, yet you dare to yell at four perfected golden immortals? You really are impatient to die, aren't you? Did you anything else to spit out? As always, ignorant people are free from fear. But you, Cretan, it seems you've now hit a dead end. With that said, he immediately unleashed his immortal sword and shot it toward Tang Xiao. Tang Xiao intentionally wore a horrified expression and jumped into the lake in a flash. He submerged quickly and could sense that those four perfected golden immortals were all chasing him with ferocious and thirsting for his blood expressions. Come chase me and I'll help you fulfill your wish to die. Tang Xiao dove a kilometer into the lake and then stopped all of a sudden as he blasted away his divine sword, in that instant to slash the four people. The sharp sword energy slashed the water surface and crushed down toward the four. Bang, bang, bang. The four people were caught off guard and were forced to retreat. They never thought that such a weak golden immortal nobody was so audacious and daring to fight against them, for perfected golden immortals. Even though they had tried their best to block his strike, 
The tumultuous blood inside their bodies made them realize that the strike of this man in front had injured them slightly. Kill him. The killing aura of the female perfected golden immortal in black robes almost materialized. She dashed fast towards Tang Xiao even though they were still under the water surface. Venerable North Pure instantly followed and shouted coldly, something strange with this punk. His aura is only at the Earth Immortal stage, yet the power he just unleashed is on par with perfected golden immortals. It's highly likely he has some kind of divine armament or something. Let's join up and try to kill him as fast as possible. Got it. The four people moved and attacked, resulting in a vacuum area a kilometer in diameter under the water. Chapter 1355, Achieving Two Targets at Once 1,000 meters deep at the bottom of the lake, Tang Xiao carefully and vigilantly observed the surroundings, watching the four perfected golden immortals. He instantly released his aura and forced the lake water three meters around and then ignited the Nine Heavens Thunder Art instantly. Crack. Boom. Loud explosions of thunder and bolts of lightning struck in the deep lake as though it was in the sky. The flashes of lightning were as though electric eels cruising and weaving the lake water into a power grid in an instant. The four perfected golden immortals lunging towards Tang Xiao had their faces enormously changed and gave up attacking Tang Xiao, and unleashed powerful strikes one after another to force the surrounding water lake away from them to avoid themselves from getting electrocuted. It's time to retreat. Tang Xiao didn't prolong the clash and bolted to the back. At the same time, he sensed a terrifying aura coming from another direction very fast, so he quickly took out an invisibility charm to hide. Watch out, everyone. Venerable North Pure could only stare as Tang Xiao's figure vanished with a helpless face. As he sensed Tang Xiao's aura rapidly dissipating, a vigilant look was cast on his face and he shouted in a deep voice. The black-robed woman's expression suddenly changed and she interjected with a deep voice, there's another powerful being in this lake, and it's approaching us very fast. Let's be careful even though a late-stage, perfected golden immortal won't be able to make us stay here. Several breaths after, the elusive aquatic golden eyes beast came into the sight of the four perfected golden immortals. However, they didn't look afraid even though the aura of the beast was very powerful. The look of greed on their faces was more evident as they stared at the head of the golden crystal beast. That was a corona, a crown. One they couldn't tell what material the crown was made of, but they could recognize the 108 gorgeous dragon pearls embedded on the crown. Each pearl was a multicolored dragon pearl formed after the death of a sacred dragon, whose essence then condensed into a dragon bead and then turned into a five-colored dragon pearl. At the center front of the crown itself was a fist-sized scarlet-colored earth core inlaid. It went without saying that each five-colored dragon pearl was a priceless treasure, but that earth core alone was a treasure countless of immortals always dreamed of having. Even those at the supremacy stage also desired it. Let's kill this beast and snatch those colorful dragon pearls and the earth core. The four exchanged glances and one of them shouted. Boom. The golden-eyed aquaproof beast was the first to attack. Its big mouth opened and shot out a mighty torrent of water. The powerful torrent of water was like a tide of artillery shells torpedoing the four people instantly. Golden Aegis Shield Quicksand Reticulum Black Gold Immortal Tablet Myriad Adamantin Venerable North Pier's group of four simultaneously released their respective defensive artifacts and formed a net in front of them. They hadn't yet figured out the true strength of this goldenite aquaproof beast, so they directly chose to defend. Boom. The tens of meters wide torpedo like mighty torrent clashed with the four defensive artifacts. The four artifacts continuously cracked and then shattered into pieces, resulting in the water attack hitting the four people. Pwa. The four people crazily coughed up some mouthfuls of blood and were forced back. It was just one blow, yet all of them had been wounded. Although their injuries were not too serious, the terrifying blow from the golden-eyed aquaproof beast sent a chill down their spines, and fear now birthed inside them. With slightly trembling hands, Venerable North Pure shouted loudly, This golden-eyed aquaproof beast is very powerful. 
even if it can't be compared to a supremacy stage powerhouse, this beast is at least comparable to a late stage perfected golden immortal. I don't think we have a chance to defeat it. Venerable Northomen wiped the blood from the corner of his mouth and said aloud, but we won't get that crown if we can't fight it. We can't just enter a treasure mountain and return home empty-handed, no? I'm sure we brothers and sisters will regret it later. The black-robed female interjected with a heavy voice, let's quickly find a way. Even though we can't kill this beast, we must get the crown on its head. I suspect that that object is no longer an immortal artifact. It should be a primordial chaos treasure. A primordial chaos treasure? The other three were shocked and the greed in their eyes intensified. It must be noted that a ninth grade immortal artifact was already a terrifying artifact, that even a supreme may not necessarily have it in possession. As for primordial chaos treasures, such objects were priceless in the eyes of these supremes. If this object is really a primordial chaos treasure, then if I get it, my combat power will be improved by at least several levels. I'll definitely be able to slay a late stage, perfected golden immortal. Venerable North Pier's body shivered and he shouted fiercely, We have no other choice but to go all out, everyone. It's the way and the heart of the strong, so let's go all out. Kill. The other three were also battle seasoned powerhouses with tenacity and wildness in their bones. Facing such heavenly treasures, they even forgot about Tang Xiao. The elusive golden eyed aquaproof beast was an immortal beast reared by drunken immortal supreme for some tens of thousands of years. After staying here for 80,000 years, its real age had reached 120,000 years, so its strength was comparable to an early stage supremacy stage powerhouse. At present, the beast saw four weak humans coming here and provoking it, stimulating its ferocity and wrath. The moment it shot bubbles from its mouth, its sharp claws also instantly swept over towards them, forcing the water to both sides as the claws pierced through the bubbles. Blob The bubbles instantly exploded the moment its sharp claw clashed with the innate natal immortal weapons unleashed by the four bringing out devastating energy that instantly increased the explosion power thousands of times. God. This thing is even stronger than before. Run. The four people crazily coughed up blood and their bodies plunged upside down like snapped kites for hundreds of meters, while their defensive artifacts were all shattered. Suddenly, the black-robed female shuddered. A stream of water instantly wrapped around her body like a snake. The enormous suction force barred her from being able to resist and she was pulled to the beast's mouth lightning fast. The instant after, the beast's crystal-like sharp front teeth snapped her body. Her immortal soul was not able to escape and was directly swallowed by the golden-eyed aquaproof beast. At the same time, Venerable North Omen was also being pulled to the front of the water beast. Terror covered his face and despair filled his whole being after witnessing how the black-robed female was instantly bitten and swallowed by the beast. I'm dead. Venerable Northoman closed his eyes in pain and growled. Two senior brothers, please help me take care of my family. Boom. The golden-eyed aquaproof beast was just about to swallow Venerable North Pure, but the action of Venerable Northoman to explode his immortal soul blew it away causing it to wail in pain. Most of its teeth and mouth were blasted and the huge impact injured it heavily despite its powerful strength. Whoosh! A figure suddenly flickered and silently appeared above the golden-eyed aquaproof beast. The beast would have been able to sense him had it not been for Venerable Northoman's self-exploding action. However, it was now in pain after getting exposed to the explosion. Thus, its ability to sense anything in the surroundings was rendered useless. Stab A piercing strike from the divine sword stroked its head, causing the crown on its head to be thrown off and then was caught by Tang Xiao's hand, who appeared out of the blue. Afterward, Tang Xiao exerted all his strength and crazily circulated his primal chaos force in his body and then dashed, to the distance like a lightning bolt. Junior Sister Zhu Rong Junior Brother North Omen. 
Venerable North Pure and another perfected golden immortal looked pained at the same time as they roared, gritted their teeth, and rushed toward the golden-eyed aquaproof beast. To their shock, however, that figure who appeared in their line of sight and his action made them furious and cough up blood again more crazily. You abominable thief! Return that primordial chaos treasure! Both men no longer cared about taking advantage to attack the beast during its short moment weakness but instead tried to chase Tang Xiao. What had driven them so crazy? It was all for those great treasures. Nine Heavens Thunder Art The moment Tang Xiao retreated like crazy, he didn't hesitate to cast a spell, conjuring countless lightning bolts and thunder to blitz down to the lake's surface. The crushing lightning bolts from the sky instantly made the bottom of the lake turn upside down. Roar! The golden-eyed aquaproof beast immediately sobered up after getting struck by lightning bolts. Its eyes turned bloodshot with crazy killing intent after it was gravely injured. Seeing that the two enemies just passed by it, it immediately roared and pursued. Venerable North Pure and the other perfected golden immortal were desperate and felt like dying at the same time. The lightning sparks made them slightly helpless. Who would have thought the previously fainted golden-eyed aquaproof beast would sober up at this time? Escape. Run quickly. At this time, Venerable North Pure no longer cared about chasing Tang Xiao or the crown again. His figure turned as though a cannonball as he dashed forward, though he got struck by tens of lightning bolts in the process. Arg. The other perfected golden immortal, however, couldn't escape and was hit by the golden-eyed aquaproof's sharp claws and let out a painful shriek as he got swallowed by the beast. However, thinking that he couldn't survive, he chose to explode his immortal soul. The golden-eyed aquaproof had just been hit hard. Although it barely survived the blast, it couldn't withstand the second explosion from a perfected golden immortal's soul detonation. Its beast soul collapsed and its head was blown to death. Venerable North Pure was too close to the perfected golden immortal who exploded himself. The impact of the explosion made him get struck by more lightning bolts, causing blood to flow out from his eyes and nose. The moment he escaped from the bottom of the lake, the man was already close to dying. Slash A sword light that looked as if it was able to tear through space flashed slashing the unprepared venerable North Pure's body into two halves in nearly a flash. Even his immortal soul was unable to run. Huh? So easy. Tang Xiao never thought that such a powerful perfected golden immortal would be so easily slain by his sword. He didn't even cast his devour and fusion abilities, for God's sake. <laughs> Thank you.